the 86 clear set has Jordan's rookie, Alajuan's, Barclays, Ewing's, Carl Malone, Isaiah Thomas, Dominic Wilkins, and they all come from different draft classes. But they're all considered rookie cards because there was a huge gap between the clear and the tops. Same thing happened with Formula One. People will are basically a lot of people are catching on to this and they're saying, hey, that's Lewis Hamilton's first tops card. His first major manufacturer release cards. Same with the Verstappen. And then you have guys that may be future world champions. What you have is a perfect trading card store. Like I'm a little bit older, but in my lifetime, I've never seen, I, I think this is the rarest opportunity I've ever seen with this 2020 set in particular. They didn't run the presses. It was during the pandemic. They didn't know if they would sell out or not. And so it's very limited product. Already the entry point is $2,000 a box, which means for new singles to come on the market, that entry point for new, new inventory is higher than almost anything else out there. It's protecting these singles right now. That's why, that's why we brought these cards here. You know, we really think if you buy today a Lewis Hamilton first year Topps Chrome card number 299 PSA 8 that's actually high on the pop report, you buy it for under 100 bucks. What is that worth in a few years from now? Going back to what we are talking about before, it's probably worth more than Mac Jones and Justin Field PSA 10s combined. And that's, you know, how much can a Lewis go down? How much can it go up? If he is Messi, if he's Jordan, if he's Tiger Woods, which is the best comp for him, what is a first year Tiger Woods top score card worth? Right. 100%. Yeah. So here's my one question for you. Does it matter what 2020 F1 people are messing with? Or do you think as long as it's 2020 F1, it can be Dynasty, it can be Chrome, it can be the regular tops, as long as it's that first year 2020, that's all you would recommend? You probably know this. It's not as simple as yes, no. So to answer your question, right now it would be no, I think the long one. If you give me 20 years, I'll say yes. You can buy base cards, you can buy unnumbered cards, you can buy base sapphire cards. But history has shown that those fluctuate wildly more with speculators. I try to avoid those. What you want to focus on is what we are. We're a supply demand industry. So serial number cards is obviously the way to go. There's a tier to it. I'm a Dynasty fan because they made less than 3,800 total Dynasty cards in the first year product. That's it. Right. Right. And you know, there's principles and everything, but it doesn't matter. They make 8,000 new Ferraris every single year. They make 800,000 new Rolexes every year. And those guys buy. Those guys love Formula One. Those guys that buy those items. You know, it's a special set. So obviously Dynasty One. If you have to ask me after that. It's a serial numbered Chrome cards, Sapphire or Chrome. But there's so many different things. I would recommend serial numbered. I would recommend PSA graded. While they're still available, the high, the high grades. PSA nines and tens are obviously the ones that you should get because of the factory damage from Italy on them. Some of them will be the only PSA tens that exist in red. You know, there might be only one PSA 10 red and out to both And card. there might be no orange. Yeah. And famously in sports card history, imperfection creates demand. Right. You know, the precious metal gem set, I believe there's no PSA 10 out there. Which there shouldn't be. A oh. card out of a pack should not be a gem yeah. condition card. But what does that do right. to the cards? You know, nobody can be the king or only one person can be the king. The guys who own the PSA 9s, they can ask whatever they want. Exactly. You know, with this set, I think that it actually might play out that way. If you own, there's certain racers in the first year because of the Italy factory damage. There's not three guys who can own the PSA 10. There's only one. Exactly. It creates a pyramid. You know, if you buy the eight, you're gonna want the nine. If you get the nine, the bigger there's a ten. That's why the want to get it at some point. Yeah, that's why the you know going back to the basics of trading cards. That's why the mantle PSA ten is worth so much because the guys who have the nine want the ten. Exactly. Yeah, and there's only three tens for the mantle. So my last question. So obviously Dynasty, whether you're looking at baseball or F1, it comes as a sealed card. Do you think that? It matters if it's sealed versus a PSA 9. Obviously, if you have a PSA 10, there's your premium. But what would you prefer? Sealed still or as a PSA 8 or 9? I'm a collector at heart. So I don't think there's a wrong answer here. Um, I think getting a PSA 9, I like to be transparent also. So getting it, getting it graded by any grading company, PSA is always preferred, obviously, because consistency, trust, history. I think if you're going to sell it, uh, it's always going to be best to be graded. Right. If you're going to keep it in your collection, there's nothing wrong with keeping that red seal on it for the first year, you know, and just keeping it in its original condition. Um, 
Either way is fine. I, there's beauty to each of them. All right, y'all. So we were here with Leahy Sports, with with Mike, and Mike takes a very different approach to the hobby. As we've said multiple times, everyone can do the hobby however which way they want. You can be a small time collector going through the bargain boxes. You can only chase six figure cards. Whatever makes you happy within the hobby is what you should focus on. 